Welcome back to a new episode of the NetTouch Plus video quick tips. This one we're kind of branching out. This one isn't really about web development at all, but it's something I'm emailed about countless times every week, and that's just about the process of creating screencasts. So I've created an article on it over a year ago, but that's become dated. It's not what I use anymore. So I thought I would just quickly go over the program I use and how easy it is, because often uh, many people write into us and they want to create screencasts, but they worry that it's too difficult. And to be honest, it's really really not just as long as you learn a few key things so first you need a good program you really can't get away with the free stuff that's available so invest a hundred dollars if you write an article for net touch that'll pay for more than half of it all right so let's go my favorite product that I generally use is Camtasia it's, they specialize in it uh, they have versions for Mac and for PC and it's called Camtasia the PC version is called Camtasia studio and it's slightly more capable but both great so let's open this up and let's see what we're going to use here. I'm going to start a new project. And I'm just going to work with a video I already, already recorded. So I'll drag that in. And you can see how easy it is to work with it. So after you're done recording, we'll just drag this in. And I can zoom out if I want. OK, let's first play it. Hi, my name. OK, and I'm going to slide back just a little bit. I can set the canvas right here to 1280 by 720. So first, why don't I create uh, a fade-in effect just so it fades in a little bit. So if I zoom in all the way, you can see that fade-in effect. And I can adjust that however much I want. So now if I do it, Hi, my name. it'll fade in. Another option you can do is they have a, a whole plethora of different little animations. Generally, be careful about using too many of these. It can get a, a little tacky, I think. But if you want like these little rotate-in kind of things, you can do that. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Way. So I'm going to get rid of that, and we'll stick with fade in. And then we also should add a fade out. So I'll drag that to the end, and it'll automatically figure out what I want to do. OK, next I'm going to go back to my main directory, and I'm going to import some media. So I will import the Envato Sting and our logo. So you can see how easy it is to get, work, get to work with it. Zoom out a little more. And first, let's drag in the Touch logo. So I'm just going to click it and drag it all the way to the end, and you see it'll automatically figure it out. Next, I need to resize this, so I'm going to bring it down pretty small. And we'll drag it all the way down to the bottom right corner, like so. Next, I want to add a drop shadow. So I'll go up here, and I'm just going to click on the drop shadow and drag it right in. Easy peasy. So I'll make it a little smaller, like so. But then... Hi, my name is Joe. Let me zoom in, and you can see we have it a little too late, so let's bring it in, like so. And also, I'm going to add in, let's make sure it fades in as well. So now if we click on it, Hi, my it name fades is in Jeff. like you would expect. Okay, well next, why don't we also add the Envato Sting? So you can see, just ridiculously easy to work with. So I'm going to grab that video, and let's just bring it all the way to the top. But I don't want the video to begin playing until it's finished. So what I can do here, and if we click on it, Hi, my name. you can see how that works. So I'm going to bring this all the way up because of this low resolution. And I'm going to grab the video and this. And I'm going to bring it to the very end, like so. And I should also go ahead and add some kind of fade in and fade out effect. So now let's bring it back down, zoom out, and we have one more problem. This video isn't the correct size, so normally I would just use a 1280 by 720 version of the video. But for this case, let's just keep it simple and stretch it out and then bring it up. Just crop it a little bit. So okay, that looks fine. But next, this spacing, there's a little too much time right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a little piece of this out. So I can cut by right clicking and I can cut or I'm going to hit on the Mac Shift Apple T and that'll create this cut. So what I'll then do is just get rid of this entirely. So I can either do a ripple delete and a ripple delete is where you delete the video clip and everything after it bumps up or I can just delete it manually. It's up to you, it really depends. It'll also only affect the video on that current layer. So now, if we try it again, you see it's displaying, and I was able to cut it off a little bit. 
Hi, my name is Jeffrey Way. Okay, so you can see how easy it is to work with this, and it's why it's really, if you'd like to create a screencast for NetTouch or your own site, don't worry about how difficult it is. Uh, next, why don't we increase the audio, because that's a big issue with the video submissions, is that you can barely hear them. So you can just go and click on your audio layer, and let's come down and let's raise the volume. Additionally, if you have any clicking sounds from the mouse, or if there's any noise that you'd like to get rid of, if you're in a bit busy city, you can click on that. I'm just gonna bring this in like so. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see there's two markers. The first marker is going to represent where you begin, and the second marker you can see right there is where it ends. So if I want to adjust this, now I can click on settings, and I can say here, volume, let's bring that all the way up to 150%. So if I play it again. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Way. You may know me. And you can see if I bring that down, I can adjust this. So the manager of the coding there's 100%, I can bring it up. Net. So in this four part, so that's really the extent of it. I don't do very much at all. You don't need to. You're not a, a video person if you're creating a quick tutorial, but this will be perfect for what your needs are. So lastly, let's just drag a fade out right here, and then I can save it, and Camtasia offers an export feature or as well as uh, to their screencast.com site, which is great, or even YouTube if you want to automatically export a video to YouTube. And I don't have that set up for this particular computer, but it's amazingly simple. Uh, otherwise, you can just do a standard export, and you can set up your settings however you like. It's very easy. So there's one other option. If you ever just need to record a quick bit of video to... Um, you know, to show somebody, and it doesn't really need to be edited. You can also use Jing, and this is, happens to be by them as well. It's just a coincidence. They do great products. Uh, so the way Jing works is you can quickly take a snapshot or video. So if I want to, for instance, let's say I'm, I'm working on this website and I want to change it, I can designate this area, and I'll say take a quick video here, and I just want to show some little feature, so I can go over this select whatever I want, and then when I'm done, they offer a free storage, or you can pay for it, but they also offer free storage. So I can share this via the site. That's going to upload. And then as soon as that's uploaded, it's automatically going to copy a link, as you can see right here, to it. So I can then send that to my boss or whomever, and immediately, there you go, and immediately show them uh, the issue. So there are other alternatives if you need something like Screener. You can use that. They uh, offer hosting as well. Uh, there are sites like ScreenFlow, and um, you know, there's a bunch of them. But to be honest, I've always found that uh, Camtasia seems to be the best quality for what I need. So if you've ever asked me before how I go about it, uh, that's it. Then, as far as recording it itself, the best advice I can offer you is leave in some of the mistakes. If you have massive mistakes, of course, edit those out. Otherwise, don't worry about leaving in a bug here or there. People like to watch you make mistakes because they will as well. And then secondly, memorize that that pause keyboard shortcut. So the irony here is I'm not using Camtasia to record the screencast because I need to work with it and I can't do that. But when you are doing it, memorize whatever the keyboard shortcut is for pause, for pause because that way when you're recording and you will definitely need breaks where you just need to gather your thoughts. You can quickly pause the video and then gather your thoughts, get ready, and play it. Otherwise, you'll have these big stretches of space where you're, you're trying to think or some bug occurs and you're trying to figure it out. And then in post-editing, you have to edit all of that video out. So memorize the pause button, leave in the mistakes, and secondly, I always say treat people like five-year-olds. It's best, and it's how I want to be treated when I'm viewing. Don't ever assume that the viewer knows way more than they do. And lastly, don't paste in huge clumps of code because it just goes right over your head. I know whenever I'm watching a video and suddenly they add 50 lines of code with paste, it just goes you know over my head and I don't want to take the time to learn it. It's better to go line by line, even if it takes longer, because if they want to, they can always fast forward. Okay, so I hoped this helped. It was kind of a branch from what we usually cover on NetTuts, but I think it was needed. I'll see you guys later. Bye.